Hey everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge and this is Cruise Peruse, episode number 89. I don't actually remember the episode number, we're doing this kind of proper today, right? Well, you'd be surprised how much of a clusterfuck it is already today on a Monday, boys and girls. So, gotta take care of some errands today and uh, actually... You know, came to UNLV to get some documents uh, taken care of, but uh, turns out, if you're not a student, can't use the computers, right? And I, listen, I'm not, I'm not here to bitch about not using the computers. I'm not going to be that fucking guy. You know, the university has their rules. I'm totally cool with that. It's just like I, I should like I'm, I'm more berating myself for not researching into that shit earlier before I fucking made my way miles away from the west side. So, right now, we're headed to the library near my house. It's gonna take a little longer than expected, boys and girls. But hey, lately, most things take longer than expected. And one thing in particular that, that took its time, in excess, mind you, was Wimbledon. Now, I know, boys and girls, no one gets their dick hard for tennis as, as much as tennis heads, I guess. I, I don't I don't know where I was going with an analogy, but listen. The men's single final for Wimbledon happened on Sunday. Uh, Jokovic versus Roger Federer. Federer lost in the fifth set, and they went to like what? 12 rallies each? Like they were they were it was like the first first tiebreaker. First tiebreaker. Uh, in Wimbledon final history. So that's some crazy shit if you think about that, right? So Federer lost in, in a tiebreaker after like 13 to 12 rallies. I think, like, listen, I don't really know. I don't really know fucking tennis terms, right? I, and and I, I say this a lot with like hockey too, but I don't really know tennis terms. But Federer lost, Jokovic won. And Jokovic is now what, 16 Grand Grand uh, grand Slams? Grand, grand Slam titles, is that right? Federer's at 20. I think, um, oh boy, Nadal's at 18, if I'm not mistaken. But congratulations, Jokovic. Hell of a game yesterday. I, I honestly thought that tennis match was fantastic. It was probably everything you want from a tennis game uh, between two of the top players in the world, really. I mean, yeah, I, I put Nadal, Federer, and Jokovic in that top three. They're pretty much like the Mountain, Mountain Olympus, Triforce kind of guys. You know, they hold the power. And it's crazy because, like, in England, no no Englishman's actually really won in the last few years, right? It's, it's kind of weird. I don't know if Andy Murray did, but yeah, well, like I said, boys and girls, I'm not a I'm not a tennis aficionado. I just really love watching guys like Federer play. I mean, he, he's just phenomenal. The way he just gets shit done, it, it's 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 stunning to watch. And really. Throughout that tennis match yesterday, I'm just thinking, my God, imagine being that lean looking and getting sponsored by Rolex, fucking balling. Like the total earning for Roger Federer, if I if I read this correctly, and please prove me wrong, or let me know if I'm wrong. The guy made 125 million fucking dollars in prize money in the last however many years he's been playing. Unbelievable. However, Jokovic has. A marginally higher earn uh, or earnings than the better which which is crazy but at the same time you realize you know he's he's a bit younger than Federer, and as of late you know tennis prizes has gone up relative to a couple of years ago so it, it's curious to see all this shit happen right and another sport I'm not really so ingratiated with and if I'm gonna be quite fucking honest I don't know anything about this cricket but when we're talking about England, we got to talk about this. Congratulations to the English uh, cricket team, English national cricket team, I guess. Uh, guys, I, I don't know the specific title, but hey, congratulations to England. They won the World Cup in a, I guess it was like a super over, that, that's the term they're using there, right? But apparently it was one of the first in World Cup history for cricket. This is the first uh, World Cup that England has won for cricket. So... I know English fans love their country winning, so happy for them. Happy for my buddy who's a who's English and who who watches cricket. I told him like, listen, I don't I don't know what the fuck 
that cricket thing is. Not not out of disrespect. I just don't really care for it. <laughs> and then you'll just see me fast forward a couple months later. I'm like riveting about raving about fucking cricket. But for now, you know, we watch tennis. We watch some uh, we don't watch any uh, cricket, but yeah, you know, we, we discuss cricket here. Because the respect is given, boys and girls. And here at the Sky Lounge. If you do something proper and right, I'm going to give you credit, right? I'm, I'm going to just flat out be like, listen, man, good kudos, good job, pat on the back, now do more. Like, I'm like, I'm that fucking shitty, you know, emotionally unavailable parent where I say, listen, I want, I want you to show me more. I know you can do more. Yeah. I'm going to be a terrible fucking father. <laughs> be a terrible fucking father <laughs> one of these days. Just, oh. Even, even worse husband. It's a terrible thing to say, but hey, sometimes you gotta be honest with yourself. You gotta be honest with yourself. And, uh, if I ain't gonna be honest with myself, boys and girls, you know, I love talking about sports, right? I mean, obviously, going so far as to talk about Wimbledon and, and, the, and the cricket game, obviously the, the latter, I, I don't really know much about. I do truly enjoy sports, and it's not just because of the physicality, but the narrative it provides, right? And right now, you know, the NFL is about to kick off soon, in a couple of weeks here. Preseason, at least, is going to kick off. Uh, you also got hockey, just lots of talks, lots of talks in the hockey world right now. You know, free agency, restricted free agents still kind of moving about. And then there is the drama-laden potentially combustible stories in the NBA. And I know, I know a lot of you are sick of fucking me talking about the NBA. If any of you tune in, I can pretty much tell a lot of you folks are tired of me babbling about the NBA. All right. But I do got to talk about it. Because so I want to kind of, you know, use this scatterbrain of mine and talk, talk about the landscape of the NBA and how I think it's going to shape out. And you had this weekend where a lot of players, you know, being introduced for the first time via press conferences for their respective teams. Uh, Alonzo Ball, namely, was one of those guys where, you know, he was, he was asked a lot of these questions. And I know some certain quotes might be used as clickbait for certain people, but all I've read into that thing was just he's, he's, a, he, he's probably irritated. He's probably irritated. He wants to prove people wrong that he can ball. He can, he is a basketball player, and hopefully in New Orleans, like, I wish nothing but the best for those three guys. I really hope, you know, Kuz, you know, does does his thing here, because, you know, he's still with us. But guys like Josh Hart, Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, the guys who left us, I hope nothing but the best for them. I hope they really do thrive in New Orleans, you know, and are able to just naturally make themselves um, contenders with Zion Williamson, all these pieces. Because at the end of the day, the whole thing with Lonzo, for me, for those two and a half years nearly, was optimism. Was optimism through what, what, I, what I saw was remnant to Lakers history. Meaning, the Lakers have done this a lot where, yes, they do acquire that one big free agent, but build around the team, you know, with the young with the young core that was drafted and was going to potentially fill out all the prophecies, right? All the prophecies of winning a championship. I, I saw a... I basically saw a new version of Magic Johnson in Lonzo Ball, if I would be really honest. The, the way he played point guard, I loved it. I know the shooting wasn't the best, but his basketball IQ is insanely high. And for those two and a half years, I was excited. I was so excited that what could potentially be with this roster. And then the talks come out, and it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a nightmare if you're a Lonzo Ball fan, as, um, as I am. So, trade happens. All this shit. Lonzo is a New Orleans Pelicans. And I, as a Lakers fan, just has to just have to hope and hope. He does his best. If you love something, you gotta let it go free as a bird. 
yeah, Alonzo came out, you know, talking to the press, and he's just ready to go. As I'm sure guys like B.I. and Josh Hart are. And that, that roster, I'm telling you guys, that, that Pelicans team, for those of you who think automatically the Clippers are going to just win anything, ah, I'd just pump those brakes if I were you. Because as good as Kawhi and PG Slut can be together, I think people who automatically crown the Clippers winners of the NBA are morons. I genuinely, I genuinely think that. And the reason why is because you're ignoring the entire context of the Western Conference. You're ignoring the fact that not only do the Clippers get better, a lot of other teams got better. A lot of other teams are also young. Right? Namely Denver and Dallas. I, I can't fucking believe people, especially the Las Vegas sport, sports books, tend to ignore these smaller, younger teams. But for me, I see a lot of potential, right? And that may be because I try to, you know, I get glimpses of these highlights of players you like, you know, you try to catch up with all this shit. I'm just genuine hope and optimism for individual players, right? But I, I wouldn't take any of any, listen, I wouldn't take any Western Conference team like that at this point. And I've, I've said this so many fucking times, too, because not only did Kawhi moving to the Clippers create parity in the NBA, but now majority of the league is a, if, if you are contenders, you have two all-stars, guaranteed. That That's a gimme, right? You have two all-stars ready to go, rearing to go. And if you got that, you got a chance in the West. And in the West, there's a lot of teams that got that dynamic right now. And, you know, certain teams, they're going to go underrated. They're not going to be, you know, as valued because they haven't made a splash. And, and I'm talking about teams like Phoenix because... You know, if you're if you're an NBA nerd, you know damn well how fucking good Devin Booker is, and I, I, I hate to admit that because it's Phoenix. I don't like Phoenix. I like Arizona. I make that very very clear. It's not my favorite state. It's like, that's a gross state. But Devin Booker, uh, DeAndre Ayton, if they grow, man, they they could be a real good dynamic duo. But again, you know, a lot of these sports media you know, types, they don't really focus on the potential, just what's in front of them right now, without taking the full context of what could be, what is. And as, as much as people hype up the Clippers, it's like, uh, all right. We're just going to ignore the fact that every, every Western Conference house is just a pain in the ass to deal with in the playoffs because you have to meet them. You have to win four games in a row. Right? That, that's the most difficult part. And sometimes it just doesn't happen for some people, for certain teams. And then depth. I mean, depth, depth, depth has a lot to do with it. And, you know, because I, 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 here's the thing, too. Right now, I can make all these speculations. I can make all these guesses as to who's going to, you know, get, you know, what seating's going to be what. It's too early right now. There's no fucking point. It's July. They'll probably do it around September. When you get like a more finalized looking roster, or at least a clearer view, but right now it's just this, it's a, it's a summer of speculation and fun, right? It's, it's the guessing game. And for the Lakers, it's it's been really you know consistent off seasons of, of questioning what the hell we're gonna do. But right now, for the first time in a long time, it looks like the Lakers have a plan. I can't believe I'm saying that the Lakers actually look like they have a plan. I know, I know. You know, AD sounded off yesterday, or is it two days ago on that press conference there. He's not talking about extensions, right? Yeah, he got he got traded. He's still got a year left on this deal. Because ultimately what he wants is gonna be that max money. He sacrificed four million for a potential third run, the superstar spot. That didn't happen. And if if AD goes out there and plays in this MVP caliber level and gets us to the playoffs, along with LeBron James, he's getting paid. He's gonna get paid. No doubt in my mind, he's getting paid. He's gonna be the face of the franchise for the next few years, in my opinion. Now, I know some of you are arguing LeBron James, but if you take a look at the age and the contract and the deals that really look like, you know, LeBron has invested himself into, you know, since he got to LA, you know, the fucking movie studios, the, the TV shit. It's gonna be curious. It's gonna be curious to see how how you know LeBron handles being number two. 
because AD's younger. AD isn't that LeBron, you know, level 99 shit, but special player. Very special player. And really, all I can do at this point is hope 83. That's right. He's wearing number three. 83 can elevate the rest of the team too. Not not just himself. Not just racing his, you know, play style and, and game to that all-star MVP level. I mean, he's already an all-star, but I'm just saying at, at two that the MVP, you know, title there. I think if he does that, he's getting extended. He's getting a fucking huge chunk of money. And ridiculous or not, I think the way the Lakers have responded after Kawhi, you know, flat out said we're it's not coming to the Lakers. I think the Lakers are a great job. I think as individually these pieces that we've acquired look a little bit questionable. I think give it time, given time. And like I've said, if they ingratiate themselves into understanding each other and being friendly with one another and becoming friends, right? That could definitely help team chemistry. And team chemistry cannot go under state of boys and girls. It's, it's vastly important. You got a bunch of fucking locker room cancers, that shit's not going to work out. It's really not. But what we have in the Lakers is a great opportunity for, you know, th- potentially three stalwart players, you know, in AD, LeBron, and Kuz. And a bunch of solid, great backup players. Like, I know Danny Green's contract can seem a little ridiculous you know, if, you're, if you're just looking at it. But what he can do for that squad, not just, you know, on the floor, but off the floor with the mentality, with the, the kind of patience that, you know, had, had him, allowed him to, you know, win a championship. You know, that was alongside Kawhi Leonard. But, yeah, ultimately, he's still a champion. So, I think... Having these guys in that locker room, these these role players that are honestly good characters. I mean, if you look at a good chunk of them, they all look like decent characters. I know Boogie gets a lot of the ire. He's got them from me too, obviously. But Boogie looks like he's a different guy right now. He, you know, obviously the weight loss is significant from what we see from Boogie. But I'm just, I'm just, I'm just optimistic. Right now. I'm just optimistic. I'm hoping for the best, hoping for the best with the Lakers, because the city of Los Angeles deserves two champions. Yeah, two champions. One is the Los Angeles Lakers, because the Lakers have been part of the Los Angeles community for decades now, and they, to me, are the only basketball team of relevance in Los Angeles. Don't even talk about the Clippers, kids. Um, don't even try that. Right and second is the Los Angeles Dodgers. Like, do I need to even say anything about the Dodgers? Like, the, the Dodgers are LA's team. Like, stop it. If, if you're going to say anybody else, stop it. If you're going to say the Angels, go fuck yourself. Go back to Anaheim, you fuck. And with that said, I mean, the, the optimism placed on my Lakers is kind of in tandem, in sync with how I'm feeling about my Dodgers right now. Because Dodgers are killing it. And like I say, boys and girls, I'm not a baseball expert. Never claimed to be. I just enjoy it from time to time. I watched the Dodgers just beat the hell out of Boston two nights in a row. Yes, they lost that Friday night game. I know that. And in Boston at Fenway Park, it's a very unnerving environment, but the boys are able to take care of business. Very proud of them. Very happy for them. But as nice as these regular season wins are, I mean, ultimately, for Dodgers fans right now, it's World Series or bust, right? That That's that's honestly it. And it, might, it sounds a little spoiled. It sounds a little, you know, first world problem-ish. But that's the nature of being a Dodgers fan right now. We have gone to two World Series back-to-back years. And a lot of teams you see, you know, that third year, you know, if you make it to any kind of back-to-back championships, it's fucking hard to try to come back that third time. It really is. You know, it's, it's indicative in the regular season and the postseason, but right now, halfway through the regular season, the Dodgers still look like they're they're carrying at it. They're going for it, and I love that. I love that mentality that the Dodgers are carrying. 
And I know fans are going to get impatient, you know, if we lose a couple of games. I mean, I sure did. We were on a four-game losing streak on, by, by Friday when we lost to the Red Sox. But players are looking good. I mean, I'm, I'm trying not to, you know, completely go ape with the Dodgers. Like, oh, we're going to win everything. Like, now I've seen them lose two years in a row. One in the most morb morbid fashion possible. Like, that Game 7 was the most morbid thing I've watched in a long time. And I've, I've watched some really depressing shit over the years. But my god, this, this, that 2017 World Series was a fucking bummer. The 2018 World Series was a bit easier for me to swallow. Because I realized the Boston Red Sox were better. They, they were a better team by far. No doubt in my mind. And as a, as a Dodgers fan, you just have to kind of sit there. And once the season was over, your, your optimism and hope goes into the Lakers, which turns out the Lakers were terrible, right? So it's a funny relationship uh, the Dodgers and the Lakers have in my life. Because as soon as the one thing is over, the other begins. And that can, you know, carry us to many different moods. Many different moods, right? Boys and girls, I've been rambling for a while. All this sports shit. Been going around in circles. Not literally on the road, because that, that would get you nowhere. That would get you nowhere. But, you know, most of the times when we talk about sports, the reason why it's so cyc cyclical, because the nature of sports is, is very cyclical, right? You win, you lose. You win, you lose. You lose for a long time. Then you win after a long time waiting. It's a weird thing, man. Sports is a weird, weird phenomenon. But we enjoy it because it's the it's the human it's the human condition, right? It, in, in essence, you know, sports is is the it's a human condition of of living. Right? I don't know how to explain this, but the reason why I talk about sports, you know, on these cruise perusals, the reason why I just nerd out about sports is like I said earlier it's a narrative it's the stories that um, individual sports individual athletes you know individual teams can can tell you and those narratives really do drive um, how much I enjoy certain sports I mean like I talked about the NBA because you know the Lakers are almost always a drama filled Hollywood you know entity you just kind of get used to it. You're like, okay, cool, noise. The Seahawks is a team of just very, like, communal, busted for fucking decades, and then that, you know, Legion of Boom championship kind of altered our history, our culture, and the roster after a while. But following these stories, following these narratives to ultimately see the glory, right? The winning is worth it. It's it's so cool to watch, but I'm not gonna lie to you. Most of the teams I, I, I cheer for now, you know, and mind you, the day, the Dodgers and the Lakers I've cheered off for forever since 1998. So that that's that's been on for a long time. But these teams like Arsenal, which I've supported since 2014, uh, the Seahawks since 20, let's say 2015, because it was after uh, Super Bowl 49. We were just saying, I'm gonna fucking follow the Seahawks now. Saw them two Super Bowls in a row, like the cut of their jib, and then plummeted. And the Vegas Golden Knights come to our town in 2017, and you know, it's my hometown. I consider this like a hometown now, and you know, adopting that team as my own has been very special. But like I said, it's it's the narratives that these teams provide provide right. Um, what they not just the narrative, but from what I've you know been following as a Vegas fan, what I've been seeing is just how these teams affect the community. How 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 really sports in general can alleviate a lot of the pressures from the outside world. Um, it's a great tool of escapism. It's also a event of camaraderie guys and gals who you have no business knowing, right, strangers sitting left and right to, right, right of you, front and back of you, 
if you're in a home crowd and you're you're cheering for the home side, you're all on the same team. And that kind of communal communal environment, man, it's very nice. I, I won't lie to you. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those guys back in college. I didn't really watch sports. I was, I was one of those guys that you know that caught up with you know current events maybe once in a while to see how the world is doing. Like, oh, cool, the Lakers won another championship. Awesome. But there's also times it's just like, I don't care who the fuck won the Super Bowl. But now now it's different. Now my ears are glued onto the sports world and it's ever beating heart. And boys and girls, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. There are times on, on these cruise peruses where I feel like I could do better. Most of these, most of these cruise peruses, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you guys are watching, you'll notice, notice this. I don't have a script. These are all just kind of, kind of copying off, uh, off the top of my head. I'm really thirsty. That's why like, my fucking lips are sticking together. But a lot of times, you know, compared to the podcast, at least compared to the fucking podcast that I do, like I feel like I could do more with this shit. At the same time, if I have a note here, boys and girls, while I'm driving, we might die. I might die. Not you fuckers. You fuckers are going to be alive to witness this hilarious incident slash accident slash uh, hilarity. But I'll be dead. So no. Can't have a script. I want to get better. I want to do it right. What shit, man. Sometimes... Sometimes you get hamburgers for lunch. You don't have fish and chips to substitute that out for. Motherfucker, that makes no sense. Boys and girls, I'm tired. I've been going back and forth from LA the last few weeks because of shit that I gotta take care of. And I gotta go back this weekend. I'm already fucking sick of LA. Not gonna lie, I'm already fucking tired of LA at this point. Because every time I've gone now, uh, within the last, seriously, within the last seven or eight months, I've gone to LA maybe four times, maybe four times. Like this, yeah, actually, this this weekend would be my fourth time. But every time I go to Los Angeles now, and I don't, I don't care that I like my, I love my Dodgers, I love my Lakers, but the city itself, the actual infrastructures of the city of Los Angeles, and the entire environment of the city. Is fucking disgusting. Okay, there is a fucking rampant homeless problem in Los Angeles. For those of you who don't go to LA, who've never gone to Los Angeles, let me tell you the state of Los Angeles right now. If you go walk in downtown LA in the middle of the fucking morning, 9 a.m., you're gonna see homeless tents everywhere. Fucking everywhere. It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. And this is coming from a state where, you know, I, I always see it in media. I always see it with these fucking influencers and shit and people that I know. This is the greatest state in the world. Like, how? How? How is that possible? You have literal homeless people fucking camped outside of government buildings. Of fucking Greyhound bus stops. It's nuts. I, I swear to God, man, like, California... Like, could be its own country, and it's going to be a third world country. They don't have their own water supply. They don't got their own fucking people taken care of. Like, Jesus, dude. Just ran out of this fucking California rant. And, like, it's because, like, that shit confuses me all the time. It does. That's why we're heading to the library to gain some knowledge, boys and girls. Remember, knowledge is the greatest weapon. Because ignorance ain't bliss. Ignorance pretty much puts you in the state of stupid. And nobody wants to be stupid. Okay? Nobody does. Unless you're a... Unless you're a degenerate. I don't know, man. I don't fucking know. I don't try to understand the world. But I do try to understand the world. Bit of an odd way to end it, boys and girls. But there, there you have it. That's, that's the cruise peruse for today. Gotta head on out, boys and girls. So, follow me at the Sky Lounge and all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily content starting tomorrow. It's probably gonna be a more regular, average cruise peruse talking about sports shit. But, a bit of a longer drive today, so I figured do this shit. So, hey, subscribe, like, comment, all that shit. 